how much truth is there? It's kind of a funny question. Uh, how suspicious should I be when I'm traveling in Ukraine or different parts of the world when when an attractive female walks up to me and shows any kind of attention? <laughs> is that is that like this kind of James Bond spy movie stuff or is that kind of stuff used by intelligence agencies? I don't think it's used. It's absolutely used. It's called sexpionage. <laughs> it's, that's the term that we jokingly call it is sexpionage. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the art of attraction, appeal, um, the manifestation of feelings through sexual manipulation, all of that is a super powerful tool. Uh, the Chinese use it extremely well. The Russians use it extremely well. Uh, in the United States, we actively train our officers not to use it because in the end, it leads to complications in how you professionally run a case. So we train our officers not to use it. However, you can't control what other people think. So if you're an attractive male or an attractive female officer and you're hap you're trying to talk to a yeah. you know an older general who just happens to be gay or happens to be straight and is attracted to you, of course they're going to be that much more willing to talk to an American who is also attractive. So it's well, it's, it's hard to walk that back. In all definitions, so it could be all elements of charisma. That's uh, so you know, uh, attractiveness in a dynamic sense of the word. So it's visual attractiveness, yep. but the the smile, the humor, the wit, the the flirting, all that kind of stuff that could be used to um, correct to the art of conversation. There's also elements of sexuality that people underestimate, right? So physical sexuality, physical attraction is the most obvious one. It's the one that everybody talks about and thinks about. But then there's also sapiosexuality, which is being sexually attracted to. Uh, to thoughts, to intelligence. Um, and then you got all the various varieties of uh, of personal preferences. Some people like people of a certain color skin, or they like big noses, they like small noses, they like big butts, they like small butts, they like tall guys, they like bald guys, whatever it might be. You can't ever predict what someone's preferences, sexual uh, arousal preferences are going to be. So then you end up walking into a situation where then you discover you know, and just imagine, imagine being, being an unattractive, overweight, married guy, and you're walking into uh, an asset or a target meeting with like a middle-aged female who is also not very attractive and also married. But then it turns out that that person is a sapiosexual and gets extremely turned on by intelligent conversation. That's exactly what you're there to do. Your exact, your mission is to have intelligent conversation with this person to find out if they have access to secrets. And by virtue of you carrying out your mission, they become extremely aroused and attracted to you. That is a very complicated situation. It's hard to know who to trust. Like, how do you know your wife, or how does your wife know that you're not a double agent from Russia? Uh, I, there's a, a large element of, uh, of experience and time that goes into that. She's also trained. Uh, and I, I think my wife and I so also- you think. Yeah. My wife and I also have the benefit of of being recruited uh, young and together where... So over time, you can start to figure out things that are very difficult to... Uh, so you form the baseline, you start to understand the person's very... It becomes very difficult to lie. The most difficult thing in the world is consistency. It's the most difficult thing in the world. Some people say that discipline or self-discipline, what they're really talking about is consistency. When you have someone who performs consistently over long periods of time, under various levels of stress, you have high, high confidence that that is the person that you can trust. You can trust, again, you can trust them to behave within a certain pattern. You can trust an asshole to be an asshole without trusting the asshole to take care of your kids, right? So I don't ever wanna mix up the idea of personal trust versus trusting the outcome. You can always trust a person to operate within their pattern of behavior. It just takes cons time for you to get a consistent, uh, to get consistent feedback as to what that baseline is for them. To, to form a good model, predictive model of what their behavior is going to be like. Right, and you know what's fascinating is I think th the challenge is building that model quickly. So technology is one of those tools that will be able in the future to very quickly create a model of behavior because Technology can pull in multiple data points in a very short period of time that the human brain simply can't pull in at the same period, of, at the same space, at the same speed. Well, that, that's actually what I did my PhD on. That's what I did at Google is forming a good representation, unique representation of the entire world based on the behavior of the person. The, the specific task there is 
so that you don't have to type in the password. The idea was to replace the password. Right. Uh, but it also allows you to actually study human behavior and, and to think, all right, what is the unique representation of a person? How, because um, we have very specific patterns mm -hmm. and a lot of humans are very similar in those patterns. What are the unique identifiers within those patterns of behavior? And that's, I think that's from a psychology perspective, a super fascinating question. And from a machine learning perspective, it's something that you can, as the systems get better and better and better, and as we get more and more digital data about each individual, you start to get, you start to be able to do that kind of thing effectively. And it's, I mean, when I think of the fact that you could create a dossier on somebody in a matter of 24 or 48 hours, if you could wire them for two days, yeah. right? Internet of things style, you put it in their underwear or whatever, right? Some, some chip that just reads everything. How heavy are they walking? How much time do they sleep? How many times do they open the refrigerator? When they log into their computer, how do they do it? Like, which hand do they use when they log in? Yeah, what, what's their most common swipe? What's their most visited website? You could collect an enormous amount of normative data in a short period of time where otherwise we're stuck the way that we do it now. Once or twice a week, we go out for a coffee for two hours. And two hours at a time over the course of six, eight weeks, 12 weeks, you're coming up with a 50% assessment on how you think this person is going to behave. Mm -hmm. Just that time savings is immense. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode. Freedom! So fresh, so new.